over everybody and welcome back. Today we will be checking out the No Rest for the Wicked Crucible update. This is a newly released like three days ago, something like that, and they reintroduced the end game content they had for now. I have to say right from the get-go, I think it's a good, good thing, right? They introducing something that it's for players that already finished the, the part of the early access that is right now out. So let's give us something to grind for or something like that. So I think that's a good decision. And what they change actually and if it's any good let's jump into it and let's look on that first of all before we will jump what is new we need to establish what was that before right it was named crucible the name is same and it was actually that you went through the door you went into the kind of a room right that was like lost for for some time and before because you are there as a serum as a uh, secret society or someone uh, the race of the people that that we are trying to figure it out what's going on with those in the in the story the room got activated right and and it's responding to you so before you sacrifice your blood and also fallen amber that was the currency that you farm along you know in the world and for each of those amber you could enter the crucible and before it was like you you went in right and there were like chest enemies and so on you need to kill all enemies uh, you know scour the area if there is something like good to find and then you proceed onward and you done it many many times before and then you engage the boss the the fallen knight or i think it's a fallen knight Something like that. So there are knights that, from the past and you need to fight them. Those are the big bosses that you need to kill, right? And you kill those and there are like four statues that need to interact in, 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 the, in the crucible right now. So that was, the, that was before. Right now they reintroduced the thing and they made it like roguelike. Kind of roguelite. But I will get to it. Now, what, a, what first change that I am incredibly like, you know, is a really good change. They remove the embers. So you don't have to use the embers to go and try this crucible and go forward. Because this was one thing that you you could go over and over and over and over and then you run out of those and you had to go to the overworld, farm like mobs and, and, and chests and after some time you would drop another ember and you could try and again. This was like breaking the flow, right? You wanted to farm the crucible, you wanted to go and, and beat the boss. But you, you were unable to do that because, I don't know, skills issues or, or something like that. Uh, so when that happens, right, and when you throw the, uh, throw you out of the window and like, hey, go uh, pick up some embers and return back, you're like, hey, this sucks. So this is a good change that they remove this stuff. Yeah, but now how it works is that you, you will interact with the statue and you will teleport in. They made it like that you have several arenas that are changing, and that there are like mobs that are showing there, and there are all the mobs that you encounter throughout the, the whole campaign, and they added new faction on top of that. So you can mix match, you can find all kind of mobs, and every time you enter the statue, and every time you're going for next level, there is a different combination. So that's bringing you the variety. So, right? What other thing they added? They added the currency that when you kill the enemies in the in the crucible, they will they will drop out the shiny yellow thingies, right? And those things you can spend on the boons. So uh, every time you you get enough, so you can open the menu and you will find there the boons that you can select. There are several rarities. There is like common. There is a blue that is like more powerful. There is a curse that is that's giving you something powerful, but taking something from it. And there is a like legendary, the yellow one, the the the, the good ones, <laughs> the rare. Yeah. And to be able to unlock them, you need to open them first. But I will get to that. So you are getting those those boons, and there is like over two hundred of those boons. So so every time you go there, you can choose like decrease the weight of your armor, or you you get that you can swing your sword and give them a heat or electricity or poison, and. You are building the character for the run and it's got the roguelike elements that when you die, you return back to the beginning, you lose all of those, pro all of this progress and you are going again. But they, that make it really, really good because, uh, uh, for example, you will not get the boons that you wanted. So you are not in the, you know, you're not in the position, for example, to fight the boss or you will have it harder 
than if you would find something crazy. So, so that's a really cool, ch cool change. And next, what they introduced is a meta progression. So they made it like roguelite. That means that if you are going to the crucible, the enemies can spawn the yellow green, yellow thing is the yellow currency, and that is a green currency as well. I don't know the name from the top of the hat, but the green currency is giving you the meta progression. That means that after some time you, you uh, accumulated a few of those, like 30, 20 or 10, you can interact with the NPC, newly re introduced NPC that looks incredibly cool. I really like that NPC and uh, you can talk to him, right? And you can spend this currency to unlock something like that will bring, like give you more power essentially. That means you'll unlock those yellow boons that, that was not possible at the beginning. You have the opportunity to go for exalted items. That is like newly released progression of your items that you can make item exalted. It's a one, uh, one time thing. So you will upgrade the item and it will get additional powers. So that's cool. And there, there are many more that you will be able to unlock. For example, there is a one that I need to mention before uh, we we'll go, uh, go jump forward. And that's the finally, uh, after you open the thing in this NPC, you can reallocate your stat points. So with this update, you can finally be able to go for different builds. You don't have to start over because when you have a like strength character, right? But you want to go for the bow because you are not feeling it anymore. So now you can. So that's that's a really good change. So that, that's the another, another thing. For the overworld, they added a few more zones to actually that the, those zones that are there that's the same, right? There is no new region or something like that. But they added areas to this uh, with this patch that you can explore a little bit more of those of those regions. This is a really cool touch because when you are returning back for the resources and stuff, you will encounter like different like door and that th those door were not possible to open before, but now what the hell? You open the door and there is something new, like got part of the dungeon open. So this is really nice. And I like the, the premise they are setting, that they will reintroduce new zones, but they can return to the old ones as well. And they can unlock the whole new part that was not possible because there were some random doors, right? Closed. Because you encountered them a lot on the way and now you open them and there could be a whole new area. So that's a really cool thing that I, I really like that you will be able to bring life to the old zones as much as you will introduce the new ones. So that's a cool premise that I really like. So additional things that they added, there are bug fixes, right? There is a ton of bug fixes. If you go through the patch notes, there is a lot. They said that they improved the performance quite a lot. But yeah, I will get to it at, at the end with the, with the things that I would love to improve more. So and uh, so overall, this update was really juicy. I, I feel this is the step right in the right direction. What I like the most about this, this, this is the most crucial thing, at least from me, is how devs approach to the game. Because you have to say, right, they introduced the endgame, they, they uh, spent time, they created something, right? And now they went back and, and like done everything again. They just crashed the thing and, and build it again. And this is so cool to hear and, and, and see because you, uh, you know that the devs listening, right? That they are like, yeah, people want endgame. It's, it's not really uh, on the par. So let's go and do it again. And this is really nice because, again, it's it's giving you the idea that in the future they are willing to go back and and change something they they work on already, and they will they will put a lot of more work to it to make it really like better. So I like that. Only thing that I I still struggling with, and I don't know how how to deal with kind of is optimization. Still, there are issues. I, I get the decent and computer. It's not crazy, like. There are certainly better rigs out there, but I feel that I should not have the spikes that I have sometimes. For example, when I record it, I would love to show you the boss encounter because I almost like kill him right now on when I recorded the footage from this. And that was like lags all, like all the time. I got my, my FPS on the game are incredible. It's all right, right? That there is like 60 or 100 FPS and, and the, but the, but the stuttering 
all, all over the place. So it's kind of like they are working on it, I guess. Uh, so they will figure it out later. But still, optimization needs to be on top notch. But they, yeah, I, I hope they're working on it still. So one more thing that is like, like most crucial that I, I really enjoy the game overall. But there is one thing that I kind of struggle with, and that's a food. When, when you compare this game, because it's ARPG, but it's combined with those Dark Souls or, or Souls-like elements that it's more methodical, more like, you know, you have to like wait your moves. It's not like smashing the buttons and it will happen. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's fun, but but overall you need to like really dodge those attacks and, and be wary of all the patterns of the enemies that they are, what they are doing. But with the food, you are consuming something that you need to get and when you consume it and you will die, for example, you are beating head against the boss that you are it's in front of you, and you will die several times, but you're consuming that food, and especially that's that's uh, bad in the crucible. As I said before with the embers, right? That you had to go through overworld to get the embers to be able to continue the crucible is the same with the food. I'm I'm like farming the crucible. I'm trying my best to get far as possible to kill the boss. And after some time, I'm just run out of food. And I'm like, I have two options now. I have to go to the overworld, collect the resources for several hours or something to get enough food, or I have to go back to the city and buy it for money, right? And but you have to earn the money somehow. So it's like breaking the flow. And I don't know how to no, I have several ideas how to solve this issue. There are actually there are two. I would love them to introduce the crucible flask. <laughs> like the, the item that is like Dark Souls, that is Estes flask, right? That you will be able to drink. There will be several charges, there will be no food usable, right? or maybe some some other items for the buffs that you will like like pills right that you will you will go for the pills in the crucible and it will give you buff for the health or or damage but you will have a flask that will give you some health back and you will be you will have limited amount of uses that would be a really cool thing right and and it's 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 great for the meta progression as well, because you can increase amount of flask that you will have, increase the potency of the fl Estes flask, but you will not be able to use them outside of the crucible, because that would change the, the, the idea they are going for, that you have those resources and you're collecting all over the world. Second idea, I think this is the best one for the Crucible. Second one is that I would love to introduce NPC that will, for example, like cook, cook for you or hunt for you. You will like set him assignment that he will go and, and bring you all bring you resources that you want. For example, hey, I want mushrooms or I want I want meat. So let's go and send him for 20 or 4 hours because there is already a time gated thing with the building the city. Let's send him for 24 hours to get me meat and, and increase the amount of people you can get, increase the efficiency. And there is another like idea that will go inside the city of, of the wife that you have those people that you can use for your advantage. So I would love to see that because the food is uh, the only thing that it is really like not stopping me, but there is the hurdle, right? That, uh, for example, I, had, I streamed the game right for four hours and I run out of food. And I was like, yeah, I am... I'm quitting now because I need to go, but I needed to go out to farm the food for the next stream to be able to ready just go for the crucible. And I don't feel that's that's a really cool way to go. But overall, the the, the crucible is a really good step. I really enjoy the, the ideas. And the, overall, the end game is more fun than it was before. So for me, the game is great, and if you are on the on the verge of yeah, should I try it or should I not, I think you should. If if it's not like money breaking for you, right? If it's like the, <laughs> I will not have for food, but I will be able to play it. I think that's not a great idea. But if you have disposable income and the game is super fun, and I feel there is a really great potential that where the game is heading the story is interesting the the zones are awesome the the characters and enemy enemies everything is going well so hopefully they will they will like keep that doing 
and it will be better and better so that's it from me today thank you very much for hearing what i have to say let me know down below in the comment section uh, what you think have you played the, the um, no rest for the wicked are you going crazy in the end game and you have everything what what is possible let me know your your thoughts on the estes flask and and the food in general if you're struggling with the same thing or you're like yeah that's uh, that's no biggies because i figured how to do it or something i'm not getting hit so i don't don't need food or something like that. let me know i'm so curious to hear but that's it thank you if you want to check out more content you can click on the videos or you can hit the subscribe button and you will never miss any video again that's it thank you see you peace